Hey everybody and welcome to your hashtag female filmmaker Friday vlog. Today I am doing something a little bit different. I have Shilpi Roy with me. She did hipsterhood and she did uh, and she's doing ring and she's here to talk about her experience as a woman in the industry who is not white because I very much am and I thought it would be a good idea to kind of branch out and see what other experiences are like. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. My pleasure. On your way to a late night show I see. Yeah, yeah, I have I a little too much eyebrow because <laughs> I don't have my brown eyeliner anymore. So I was like, <laughs> do you want to talk a little bit about your experiences as a woman of color in the industry? My first experience is really coming to the industry. Um, so I'm from North Carolina, and um, you know there there was no industry over there to speak of. It was just get a job, have kids, get married, that kind of thing. So when I decided to like go into filmmaking, uh, I came out here and. There were so many like people of color everywhere. There are a lot more Latino people out here mm -hmm. than there were in you know North Carolina, which was very black and white. And there were so many like more color and brown people, mm -hmm. specifically brown. And like I would get confused for like Latino all the time. Really? When I first got out here, um, that was really cool. And then like you get into the film industry, and it's just a bunch of white men. <laughs> and, and so I was like, wait, how did? But there's so many people of color on the street, mm -hmm. but in the offices, there mm -hmm. there are like none. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really my first like, whoa, this, this, it's segregated like almost in the same way that the South is. Is there any resistance to you coming into those meetings with white male executives or is it, have you felt like it is pretty accepting? Has it changed over time? Um, well now, like I came out here, what, 10, 14 years ago. Okay. And um, everybody was very happy to meet with me when I first came out here because I was just a brand new person right. and there were no expectations of me like I wasn't selling shows at that time. Right. right? So <laughs> you weren't bothering anyone. Yeah, I wasn't really bothering anyone. Yeah. I was like, I want an entry level job. And they right. were like, well, we can, that, that we can do. That was not a, a, really that difficult. Um, I know my first job that I got hired for, I believe I was hired specifically because I wasn't white. Because they said, we just, we saw a lot of white people, they were really boring. And you like, were that, interesting. What does that so, feel like? Because I know the, as a white person hearing I got hired because I wasn't white can be frustrating because yeah, you're like, I get that, but, but what does that feel like as a person of color to hear that? I mean, again, I am, I'm okay with it because right, they, right, were, they were clearly looking for something that they weren't finding in those okay. people. Right. Found, it was, right. I mean, it wasn't just the skin color. It was, but that's my question. Like, is it sort of demeaning? Like, so you're just hiring me for I know. I diversity? Mean, here's the thing. I have a positive and optimistic outlook on life. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it wasn't to me. Mm -hmm. I was just really happy to have a job. If they gave me a chance because of my skin color, as long as I can perform, uh, that's fine. If that's how I right. get in the door, that's fine. But but I, <laughs> I will say as I got like more experience and then I started like doing bigger things, um, that's when kind of the, the skin color becomes more important because they're just less likely to trust you. That sucks. A little bit. I you am know? hitting these decorative jars. I'm going to take this down. I have found that as I climb up the ladder, I know what I want, I know what I need, and I demand it more, and that they don't like. Yeah. That's the... Like before, you know, when you're kind of a wide-eyed, like, oh, I just got here, everything's mm -hmm. amazing. They're like, yeah, all right. Yeah. And yeah. now you're bitchy yeah. because you yeah. are... And I actually think that's more of a female-male thing than I it think is so a skin too. color thing. Um, but now they don't trust you is probably different. And then the, like, the skin color just adds to it. Right. You know? Um, the other thing is I'm, I'm trying to tell stories about people who look like me mm -hmm. and often the people I'm trying to sell these stories to do not look like me. They're already taking a chance on the story being about a non-white person and then she they have to take another chance on the person <laughs> creating that yeah. story. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like a double whammy, you know? So would you say that it's harder to develop your stuff or you've found it easier to just say fuck it and go off and do your own thing without the traditional system? Um, I mean, I've done, I basically always have to develop my, you have to develop it a lot yourself, mm -hmm. even before you can take it to anybody. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's not, that's just like what you do as a writer. So that's not that difficult. But once you kind of do bring on somebody else, um, then it's, 
you know, there's some compromising. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah, I think there's compromise. Like, it, yeah. you know, I dated a guy who was a writer on a show, and he would come home with stories about, like, the studio, like, making them. And it was just a room of mostly white dudes. So yeah. I think that happens to everybody, but yeah. it probably happens Yeah, it's, more. there's, there's the maddening part of it is, like, if I'm trying to show something that's cultural or, like, realistic in a and way that is, get it. and they just don't get it. And, and and they'll be like, well, why does this have to be this way? I'm like, because that's the way it is. Yeah. And I'm like, but that's like not what we know. I'm like, well, I, I get that. But like, do you really want to take the time to explain why this is the way it is when it's not even that right. important? It's like, just, it just is. It is. I'll tell you one story I yeah. heard from a um, development exec. They were developing um, a, a seminal Chinese classic into a TV show. Okay. And apparently the notes that they were getting from the studio boiled down to, like, what are we saying about this ethnicity by making this TV show? You know Everything has to be a statement. It has to be a statement I that, do get that they're doing this. I, I do get that. Hmm. But when you, are, when you are not whatever the, like, right. default is, you're right. not, I'm not making a statement by being an Indian, I just am. Like, the thing that... The thing that I hate is when you watch something and you see, like, they've put a lot of diversity into the cast, right? right. There's the black guy, the Asian girl, whatever it is. But um, they don't feel like they were written to be those ethnicities. They just kind of wrote characters, mm -hmm. and they're good characters, and then they cast people of different colors to play them. Is that what you like? I don't like that. Why? Because um, you, like, a person's background, and especially when you grow up mm -hmm. of a different color than the country you're in, it informs the character hmm. and it makes slightly different things about mm -hmm. the character. So like when I write, I always write, I always write in my ethnicities. Right. Because um, it, it will just, it'll affect everything in a very subtle way. So that when I watch it, I'd be like, oh, that's actually, that was written as an African American guy. You can, like, you can kind of tell the difference. Interesting. Um, okay. I've been and doing everything wrong. No, no, no. And there's different schools of thoughts on this. I mean, yeah. like a lot of people will argue with I'm me. I'm kind of like people are people, but but it, it but it's I'm, really you know, it's their background. Know. Yeah, I you know, know what you're saying. A person's a background argument. influences their presence. Yeah, you're right. It always does. Like the way they were raised, who raised them, all of that stuff mm -hmm. influences them today mm -hmm. as you're writing them on the page. So I don't I don't think it, you're doing a character's service by just like not giving them an ethnicity. If like if you want everybody to be white, then that's great. Mm -hmm. But if, if you actually do want to write in diversity, then write it in at the beginning. <laughs> what do you wish white people knew? Well, the, well, the thing about writing was what I was just saying, which mm -hmm. is um, I really believe that the the way to get representation on screen mm -hmm. is to write it into the script. Write your ethnicities into the script. Write your characters with that in mind. Cool. And if you do that, then it will most likely travel all the way onto the screen. Right. Person of color in the industry, it's, I mean, like, I hate to say it, but there, there really is, you, you really do get a feeling of a sense of entitlement from white people. Not, not that they're like waving and pushing in your face, but they're just, um, there's just like, they take things for granted a little mm. bit more than I think someone like me would. Right. Um, I'm just very aware of the fact that I do not look like anyone else, and I'm really lucky to be where I am. As your, your white friend, it's hard to always feel like I have it better than someone else. That's a tough place yeah. to live in and go about your day. Yeah. So there has to be, I hope, a happy medium of, mm -hmm. it's easier for me. It must mm -hmm. be. Yeah. And you don't you don't have and to like you don't have to go around and be like oh my god I'm so privileged right I, I feel like I'm just a horrible self person like, is yeah really make it like, better <laughs> that's that's not helpful but but it's more about keeping in mind the things you can do mm. to and then help. bringing people with right. you whether it's male or female you need the men to help yeah and if it's color versus white you need the white people to help right so how how can you help and it's doing things like this cool um, done I don't need to do anything <laughs> else <laughs> it's um, it's, you know, trying to write, you know, with mm -hmm. ethnicities in mind. And if you're in a place of decision making, just very specifically think about, you know, the people of color and, and the people that you wouldn't, the people you like just wouldn't think about, think about them. And I think it's also really important to do that, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera. Yeah, the, the adding diversity at, at any point in the filmmaking process 
just adds more ideas. How do I, as like an indie low-ish budget filmmaker, how do I find people outside my group, in my budget, who aren't white? You just have to, you have to start ask. you have to ask more people for more referrals. Mm -hmm. Like you have to at least meet with them. Mm. Because mm -hmm. maybe, you know, maybe they're not right for this project. Maybe you're not willing to take a chance on them now. Mm -hmm. But at least you've met them. Mm -hmm. You'll follow their career in some way. Maybe at a later date, you'll be like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, now that I've been able to follow them and know what they've been doing, you know, they'll, they'll be on your radar. So just keep giving people... Yeah. A look. Yeah. Yeah. He, I cool. mean, I, I would meet with, I would try to meet with all of them. There's currently a pro, a lot of people are like, oh, you're Chinese, you can't play Japanese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm white, I can play British or Russian or, you know, like, mm -hmm. German. what's the line? Yeah, I can do that too. <laughs> what's the line? Like, are, uh, why are we allowed to play all of these? Right. But if you're Chinese, you have to just play Chinese characters or if you're... Um, it's It's just about representation and quantity that's all it is okay there are so, so many shows for white people right. and there's a lot of stories and like you guys see yourselves all the time right and um it portrayed in many many different ways and it's just like okay like you, you can do what you want you know right. but but like any one ethnicity has if they're lucky two tv shows mm -hmm. and so it's like okay if that's all i get I want mm -hmm. it to be as authentic as possible. <laughs> that makes sense. I, I, thank you for explaining that. It's a question were... I've had for a long time and I feel like if I ask it on Twitter, I'm just going to yeah, yell at. Like, so, like, like, you give me one show and you cast like a different ethnicity from what the character is, then just change the character to that okay. ethnicity. You know? Well, this was... So tell me about Ring because that's oh, yes, your current yes. thing and I want to hear about so, it. Ring is a, so I'm part of this program called the American Film Institute's Directing Workshop for Women. Cool. Um, it is a prestigious program, very difficult to get into, but they pick um, eight women out of hundreds of applicants every year. Wow. And they give us mentors, training, and guidance to make a kick-ass short film. And this film is often um, a big career boost for the people who go through the program because it's usually pretty good. That's great. <laughs> it's the whole point. The whole point of the program is to support uh, women in the industry. Mm -hmm. So it's called Ring um, and uh, we're raising money for it right now. So um, head on over to the campaign page because we could use some dollars. But uh, it's about a, um, an Indian American woman like me um, and she has recently gotten out of a long engagement that she broke off and um, so she's very adrift in life and not quite sure how she's going to move forward. You know she used to be very confident and secure and now she's just all over the place. So. She goes on this blind date, and like it's going horribly because it's a blind date. Sure. But um, her uh, at the same restaurant, there's another couple that are trying to get engaged, and that's also going wrong. <laughs> so the movie is about the two women on these two dates bonding in the bathroom over kind of their issues with love and trust, and you know what's going on with their dates. Cool. So you're you're wondering like, is this woman going to get engaged? And how is this other woman going to kind of succeed on her blind date? So cool. it's like a rom-com. Um, but with... I like that. But it's got, like, yeah. feelings. <laughs> it's, oh, those. It's intimate. Nice. Um, very, you know, female-centric. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I what I like to do is write brown characters, but as, you know, people, right? Not as stereotypes. I don't understand. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh, I'm going to put the link... In the description for Thank people you. and maybe like YouTube did this thing where now you they don't you can't click on them but I'll put links mm. on places we we raised a lot of money really quickly but we have stretch goals um, because you know I I like to make movies you know I want to bring you guys this new world that you haven't seen a lot of um, and I'm hoping to turn it into a TV show awesome yeah that seems to be kind of the way like that's what we're doing with the long dig we want to yeah. segue it into TV well, this was great. I feel like I learned a lot. Thank you so much for <laughs> Thank teaching you. me stuff. I know sometimes it can be a little like, oh my God, come on. No, but no. I, I really I, I appreciate I love you it. doing this. Yeah. Um, I, I hope I didn't come off as like... No. I hope I didn't come off as super racist. <laughs> I mean, now is a really great time for people of color and women in the industry because, because like everyone's recognizing the situation. And I think it's okay so, to ask questions and be wrong. Yeah, I, I yeah. think that's fine. Yeah. So it's better to have the conversation than, than yeah. not have one. I think so too.
But thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. This was super fun. And yeah. I hope to work with you for real sometime. Oh, yeah, let's do that. I would love that. Okay, cool. All right. It's on the camera, so no. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. If you would like to join me on Patreon and help contribute to make more videos like this and more scripted stuff, please visit patreon.com slash katehackett.